Welcome back to the Footnotes Podcast, the short form show with the name to grow our mentality in running. Whether you're a returning listener or just tuning in for the first time, be sure to follow and leave a review. It's a great way that we can get these messages out to new ears. In today's episode, our guest is a full-time adventurer, an environmental and civil engineer, as well as a truly knowledgeable runner. If you're looking for new insights or valuable information, you won't want to miss this conversation with my friend, Mikey Zedon. Mikey, welcome to the show. It's been a while since we've spoken in person, but I'm glad to reconnect and set this up. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a minute. Glad to be here. So seeing you grow over the years as a runner, creator, and traveler has been so much fun to watch. Your running journey has taken you from Ohio State to Virginia Tech and now as a runner for the Hoka Aggies. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Hoka Aggies. And you've had that opportunity to represent different teams at the collegiate and club levels. That's a club, right? Yeah, so it's a club with a USATF, and there's a group of a bunch of us post-collegiate who are still training on uh, with the Aggies. And I'm sure that's a unique experience in itself, and I'm wondering how have these different experiences shaped your running mentality? Yeah, no, it's been it's been good. It's definitely been a lot. So starting out, I ran undergrad for those who don't know at Ohio State, and then once I graduated because of COVID, I got extra year of eligibility, ran for Virginia Tech, and now I run with the Hoka Aggies, and it's helped a lot focusing on what brings me to the sport because I've had a bunch of different coaches now through the years who I all I'm close with all of my coaches a bunch of amazing teammates but in the end of the day going from team to team it's it's me I'm the constant one right I'm the only thing that's consistent here is in my story so it's taught me what motivates me what drives me what forces me to get up at five in the morning every day to go for my run and I've gotten to see all these amazing runners through the years, see their stories, what brings them to it, and kind of just learn piece by piece everyone's story and kind of shape that into my own. So like I learned a lot from Ohio State. They shaped a lot of who I am today for my running. Virginia Tech kind of helped perfect that a bit as I see it. And now with the Hoka Aggies, I just get to execute. And it's really helped me mentally see like what is it that brings me to running? What can I take away? And um just learning something new from each group. And that's such an awesome perspective. I know that's something I can share in with you starting out at a JUCO level, then moving to D2 and looking to pursue a career after collegiate running. I know there's just so many differences in the coaching and the team and the atmospheres that you'll be in. And we're also both digital creators. So I I think that's something that's very unique that we can both share in and uh, support each other in our goals. Yeah, absolutely. It's been it's been cool to see you grow. And then I'm doing my own work as well. And it's been fun making, I do a lot of travel content and keeping the running up as a unique perspective to travel, I think is something that's also been unique. Um, You know, last year alone, I got to travel through a lot of Australia, New Zealand, the Dominican Republic, uh, Indonesia, Costa Rica, uh, Mexico, and Canada. And I'm actually gearing up in a week and a half, um, I don't know when it's to be released, but I'll actually be in Uruguay, Panama, potentially Argentina, and, and then Guatemala later this year. I've been, my training, I keep consistent throughout that. My coach from Mahoka, he sends me the work to do and I get it done. And I've gotten to see, you know, like villages of kids and like Indonesia, for example, as I'm running by, they'll be like cheering me on as I'm going. Or I had like this one hill workout I did in the Dominican Republic where as I'm running, there's no one on the road like out, you know, running or doing anything. I had a motorcyclist pull up and like in Spanish, he's like yelling at me like, way to go, man, keep it up. And it's just things like that. It's like those pure human connection moments while out and doing things. And I wouldn't trade it for the world. I personally feel like being a traveler and a runner often go hand in hand. Like you were saying, there's a lot of opportunity for that human connection wherever you go. What else might have happened or how has that travel impacted your mental outlook on running itself? It's really focused into my why, finding my why, you know, because it's really easy to say, like, go to another country, you're at a hostel, it's 445, five in the morning, and you're like, why am I getting up? Why am I going for a run? And over the year, I've really focused in on it's my passion for the sport, right? And you're going out seeing these new places, you get that competitive edge still, because for me, like the competition never leaves. So it's fun, like training for this, seeing why is it that I'm training, coming back home, coming out to California, and then hopping into a meet and getting ready to roll. And travel, it's taught me that, again, like 
running is a consistent thing for me. You know, I get up every morning and I can rely on running being there. I can go out for a eight mile run or whatever it may be. I can go out, do a fart leg, do a track session, wherever I'm at. You know, it's a sport that you can take with you everywhere. And running has really taught me you can see so much of the world by foot. You can connect with whole different groups and people through running. You can meet amazing people through running. I got the pleasure of training with the Melbourne Track Club in Australia, and I met some absolutely amazing individuals, amazing athletes, amazing coaches through that. And it, the running community is always so welcoming. And so no matter where I'm at in the world, there's always people out there. And it's always just made me appreciative for the sport and for the people that are a part of it. So, And I can tell just by the amount of time we've been talking that you seem like somebody who's very thankful for this journey. That's something I love to see in the running world, just people who are thankful for these opportunities, thankful for the people that are surrounding them. And while it might not take the amount of travel that you've done to, to see that, it's a great part of who you are. I think with, with that, there's all these demands sometimes as you're traveling. Um, I'm, I'm interested to see how you have to adapt, what new roadblocks might come up, you get what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, so like, so like the unique roadblocks you get traveling while also fully training. Um, and like right now I'm at 65 miles a week. In October, I got up to about 100. And I, kept, I typically keep it somewhere in that range. And, you know, even like right now, I'm looking ahead for this trip in Uruguay. And I'm planning, okay, I'm doing some work out there. I'll be up at 5 in the morning to get my run in. But I always map out where I'm going. So, um, for example, in the Dominican Republic, I would be up right as the sun's coming up. So it'd be around 530 at the time I was there. Go for my run and see where is it there, the most popular spots to run. If there's a local running group, see their routes. Because the last thing you want to do is take a route where you're going to end up in a sticky situation. And there's a couple of spots I'll talk to the people in the hostels I'm at. I'm like, hey, how safe is this location? And I've been told straight up before for certain spots I've been, if you want to make it back alive, do not go down this route. Right. And so it's doing my research beforehand of, okay, where can I go? But then also generally I have had a good time finding safe spots, but it's also trying to find those pockets of time that you have. So it's difficult when you're flying between locations. I'll try to plan it where if it's a whole day of travel, try to have like a longer layover in the middle. Um, Like coming back, I have a trip set for Guatemala and I have an eight hour layover in Florida. And I do that. So this way I can get, I can put my stuff at a gym leave my bags there, go for a quick, you know, seven, eight mile run or workout, get back to stuff, get back to the airport and keep going. Um, If I'm motorcycling through places, it'll be a similar thing of find a spot, find a gym, find a location or a hostel where I can put my bags, go for my run, keep going. I've done it where I've done like fake out runs in the middle of like an eight hour long driving day. I keep my stuff locked to my bike, go for my run, come back to the motorcycle, pick it all back up, put my gear back on, keep going. So like you find ways to utilize, fully utilize the time that you have. And any little break you have in the day or one or two hour window, you're like, okay, this is the time I'm going to go for the run, you know, on top of your early morning runs and things like that. So you get creative with it, but you just got to like do your research and be pretty uh, on top of time management there, I'd say. Something super crucial for our sport really staying on top of things, knowing when to make the right moves, make the right decisions. I know for you, you're a person who wears many hats. You are a runner, you're a blogger, you're a traveler, you're a digital creator. How do you find the time and uh, mental capacity to balance and juggle all these careers that you're constantly striving to improve in? Yeah, that's, that's an awesome question. Um, so it's kind of everything I do is something that I'm passionate about. And I think that's what ultimately helps, right? And I have time where I do my travel creation. There's time where I do update my blog. There's times when I, you know, focus on things like that. The running for me is a consistent day to day, right? So that'll be, I take one day off per week. So it's six days out of the week. My time for running is my time for running. It also helps me like sort out my thoughts for the rest of the day. And then, you know, one day a week, essentially I'll take aside for my blog for my travel website, get that all in order. Um, I'll take another day into my free time and kind of sort out any itineraries I have going on. Essentially having my day, it's almost like Lego blocks where everything kind of stacks up on each other. But since I love everything that I do, it never feels like a chore. It never feels like a hard task. And I think that's what keeps me going is 
doing stuff that I'm passionate about. Because with that, it doesn't feel like it's tedious work. It doesn't feel difficult. To me, it's just everything that I love coming together. Beautifully said, man. I think passion is something that we have to have in the sport in order to fuel our dreams and our goals and our ambitions. I noticed too, within that list, you mentioned running as the first part of your day. Do you find that a crucial element to starting your day, starting your routine? Um, is this what gets you up and going and focused in? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it started back when I was at Ohio State, our practices were at 6am. And so that like kind of was the building blocks of my day. My day wouldn't start, I feel like, until I did my run, you know, or whether that's a cross train session, whatever it was. And so I still take that to this day of I'll get up around five in the morning. I'll do my run when the sun comes up. And then whether it's go to work for the day, work on my website, whatever it is, it always starts with the run. Because everything else after that, to me, just comes, you know, like the run kick starts my day. It gives me the energy. It gives me time to clear my thoughts, to wake up and just focus in on the day. Um, there's other days where like I'll wake up early, do a shakeout run, and then in the evening have like a track session. But it's always the run to me is like one of the focal points of the day to me. And with the experience that you have just in the sport, I feel like you're somebody who's very knowledgeable, just has a great idea of what's going on. And you're someone I feel that is deeply involved in the running community. So how do you approach being a source for knowledge, um, approaching the mental aspect of mentorship or providing guidance to other fellow runners, especially those facing mental hurdles in their own journeys? It's difficult because every person, every runner is different, right? And something that I always talk about, whether it's my friends in college who are still running or friends in my post-collegiate group, something that I was told growing up from one of my friends who run, ran for Michigan State was never worry about the people you're going to toe the line with. Because that's something to me that mentally is one of the biggest hurdles I had to overcome. A lot of people always stress about comparing themselves to others, comparing themselves to who they might be racing later on in the season. Something I've learned from switching schools, from switching environments, is only focus on myself, focus what I can change. And I try to relay that message to others. Because when you're going to race, let's say you're racing a guy who has a 13.55K and, you know, or whatever that time may be, and your PR is 20, 30 seconds behind that. You might be like, oh, you might defeat yourself already and be like, oh, I know this guy's way faster than me. There's no way I can hold. What if they're having a bad day? What if they had a bad training block? What if they're not feeling great, but you're feeling perfect? That window, that gap is a lot smaller than you think. But if you mentally always compare yourself to someone else, you're already going to be behind. By focusing on just what I can control and controlling, again, my controllables, that's all I need to worry about. And that's something when I, people come to me and ask me, like, how, how do you get into this? How are you not worried for this race? I'm feeling stressed about this race. It's so, okay, well, what can you focus on? What's within your power going into this meet? Because once you know that you're doing everything you can, there's not much left to stress about, which is easier said than done. But again, it's my coach from Ohio State would always say this, control what you can control and everything else, let it be. And that's been the biggest thing for me. Um, and people who I talk to about it, it's just focusing on that. I think that's something, well, I, I know that's something that I use in my training a lot, that mantra, control what you can control, even when things weren't going our way. So it's great to hear that that mantra has been carried through um, program after program, wherever you go. Yeah, it's, I, it's something like I live by Coach Vergody, my coach from Ohio State would tell us that. Like, I remember one of the bigger meets I had starting out was, it was the Mayo invite at Notre Dame for indoor. And I was in the elite field for the 3K. And I was, I think the cutoff to get into that was like a eight, I want to say like an eight nineteen, and I just got in as like an eight seventeen. So like I was one of like the bottom entries, and they go in saying like, "Hey, we're gonna have pacers coming through four fifteen for the mile." Like everyone stick on, and I remember like telling my coach like, "Oh my gosh, this is gonna be a really fast race. I don't know what I can do. I'm the bottom of the pack." Like, and she just looks at me and goes, "Man, control what you can control. Stick on." Everything's going to be fine. Only worry about what you have to do and what you have to execute. It's okay. I'm not going to worry about who's taking out quicker, who's doing this, whatever. Focus on my race. And that's what's going to bring me peace of mind and power me through it. And it's something that I still hold to myself to this day is control what you can control. 
And it's such a great way to zone in, block out any other noise, any negativity that might be coming through. I know another unique part of your journey, Mikey, like we talked about earlier, was going from place to place. What would you recommend to the listener who's tuning in today who might be trying to find their place in a really hectic world? Finding your place. That's, that's, that's a really good question. Um, it depends what you're looking for, right? Like, let's say from a college perspective, you're trying to find where you fit in best. You know, talk to the coaches, talk to the athletes, see what makes you feel most at home, something that you're comfortable in, not just running, but living. And when you're going, you know, once you're done with college, if you're looking at grad school, if you're looking at, you know, work, post-collegiate running, wherever you're looking at, find a place where you can feel at home, where you can feel calm. And a lot of that comes within yourself. So it's saying, okay, I'm going to from Ohio to Virginia, to Melbourne, Australia, to California for me. It's telling myself, okay, like, let me make myself feel at home. So whenever you get somewhere new, start to go out, meet some friends, like get to know the area, learn the running trails, see what the area has to offer. So see what makes you feel best. See where you click, whether it's with the coaches, with your teammates, with the community, find little things that you like and help make that place truly feel like home. Buy in. Like, don't just go there and think, I'm only going to be here for X amount of time, because then you're never going to truly relax. So get in, buy and find whatever it is that makes you feel most at home. Again, those activities, the things you do on the side, the people, find that within yourself and that'll make it feel a whole lot better. That's a great piece of advice too. I think that it's so important to form those good habits. Um, like you said, do all those activities that are going to make you feel the most at home. And uh, my last question for you, Mikey, as you plan for future travels and adventures, How do you set goals and embrace the uncertainty that might come with exploration? You know, from goals, let's say from a running standpoint, from a life standpoint, or both. I'll go, let's go running standpoint first. So my goal right now is to focus back on a technically indoor season here. So 3K and 15, 3K and mile. And then for outdoor focusing on the 1500 and 5K. So my goal is to improve upon my PRs from last year. And I have a couple meets that I have set that I'll be doing. Most likely it'll be, I just finished up my season opener in Monterey this past weekend. And we're looking at some meets out in Stanford, uh, Berkeley, um, Mount Sac, and some of those. From my goal standpoint, it's focusing just on what I can do. It's focusing on what do I want, improve upon my PRs and work down those goals those times. Um, And with the competition, as I'm starting to get like a feel of this post-collegiate realm, I'm starting to shape that. So while I don't know the competition just yet, who's going to be at these meets, I'm focusing on my own of just slightly improving upon my personal best from last year to move in that upward direction. Um, From life goals and shaping that while traveling, I don't know quite yet. And that's something that I'm still myself figuring out is what is it that I want? What makes me feel most fulfilled? I don't have, I don't have an answer yet because to me, I have found a bunch of different places where I feel at home. A bunch of different communities where I connect to. And to me, it feels like my home is all over the world now. And the work that I want to do, my work is in environmental and civil engineering. So a lot of environmental work. It's how can I help these communities and how can I help, you know, give back. Um, And whether that's in the U.S. or abroad, it's for me, it's just what makes me feel most fulfilled in life. And that's honestly like this sounds so simple or so cliche. But my goal is just to feel fulfilled, just to feel like I am truly helping the world around me and connecting to the people around me and getting that, you know, that connection with the world, putting myself in the shoes of others, in the lives of others and creating a positive impact. So really, I'm just chasing that fulfillment and wherever it takes me, it takes me. Beautiful answer, man. I know we'll keep looking to find life's answers and make those discoveries. It's something we all. I feel like deep down strive to do is just to find our place in the world. And I really like what you said. Um, No matter where I am, I always feel at home. And I think that's a good sign that you know that you're doing the right work. You're happy doing whatever it is that you're doing wherever you are. And I I just I just think that's so great, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. So yeah, it's been it's been good. It's been a crazy, crazy ride for both of us. And it's just it's fun to follow along see where see where life takes us. Absolutely, man. I couldn't agree more. And Mikey, it's been great talking with you today. I want to thank you for sharing a glimpse of your incredible journey and insights with us today. Whether the listeners are runners, travelers, or just contemplating a different path in life, I know they'll find inspiration from your stories. 
Thanks. I appreciate it. I'm glad, glad to be here. Glad to be a part. I'm glad you asked to have me on the show. Anytime, man. Thank you. Have a good one. Cheers. Thanks for joining us today on the Footnotes podcast. If you found value in today's episode, feel free to share it with someone you know. And don't forget to follow for more mindful content. Until next time, keep growing your mentality with each and every step.